Hello everyone, my name is Steven and this is what's in my 2022 golf bag. If you haven't already watched my video on the best golf bag of 2022, go and check that out real quick and stick around till the end of the video to have a chance to win two sleeves of golf balls of your choice. Golf may seem like a simple sport, but there's actually a lot to it once you're out on the course. Because of this, I'm breaking the video into three parts. Essential gear, the things you have to have to play a round of golf, suggested gear, the things that aren't necessary but are common for almost every player to have, and baller gear. These are things that will barely improve your game and are completely optional based on your personal experience. In the essentials category, it wouldn't be a what's in my bag video if I didn't talk about the bag holding it all. Like I already made a video on, my bag of choice for the 2022 season is the Sun Mountain C130 cart bag. It has an intuitive cart strapping system, 14 full length club dividers, spacious pockets with magnets, waterproof zippers, and exceptional build quality all around. This bag has plenty of space for everything else we're about to cover, so I think it's a good time to talk about what clubs I carry. I started playing golf with this Strata Ultimate set from Callaway, a great beginner set that will get you straight onto the course. However, over the past two years, I have swapped out some of the clubs from the set, such as the driver, putter, and wedges. My current driver is the Ping G410 LST with a stiff flex shaft. The LST version is to generate less spin and be more forgiving. The putter I use is the tailor-made Spider X. I'm a fan of the weight distribution you get from mallet style putters, and this club feels good on contact even when I don't strike the ball perfectly. When it comes to short wedges, they only really come into play around the green and on approach shots. And if you're just starting out, you are perfectly fine just using a pitching wedge and sand wedge like this set came with. However, an eventual upgrade you'll want to make is by picking up a lob wedge or a gap wedge. I picked up the Kirkland Signature Wedge set for $139, which is honestly an insane deal for a gap wedge, sand wedge, and lob wedge. The lofts on them are 52, 56, and 60 degrees, and they are three quality clubs for the price of one name brand wedge. The irons and hybrids in my bag are the remaining clubs from the starter set that I haven't swapped out yet. And they all have a cavity back design to give you as much forgiveness as possible as a beginner. These clubs have treated me well, and if you want to see a full review of any of these clubs or sets, let me know down in the comments section. Now that we ran through all the clubs in my bag, there's one last thing that falls into the essentials category, and that would, of course, be golf balls. I don't really have a preference over one ball or another because I lose so many, but I have been enjoying playing the Callaway Chrome Soft Triple Tracks. Whatever you do, make sure you show up early to your tee time with at least two sleeves of balls, since you'll be overpaying for them if you wait to buy them at the pro shop. Moving into the suggested category, I carry a lot of gear that is pretty affordable, but will significantly improve your golf experience. The first thing is tees. Every pro shop will have wooden ones, but I carry these Pride Professional driver and iron tees, and I honestly can't ever remember breaking one, so a $10 pack of them should last a very long time. Next is this Weathersoft glove from FootJoy. A glove on your non-dominant hand will help a lot with keeping a good grip on your clubs, and I burn through gloves so quickly that I try to buy ones on the cheaper side. 
The next two items have to do with keeping your gloves and balls clean while playing. And that would be a brush and towel. The brush is for wiping off your clubs between shots as they kick up sand and grass. And the towel is for wiping down your golf ball, clubs, hands, or anything else that gets wet or dirty. This brush is by Champ Key off of Amazon. And this towel is the magnetic caddy towel from Ghost Golf, which I like because I can just throw it on my bag and it will stick to one of my wedges or putter. Last up in this category is a divot tool slash ball marker. While you can always use a tee to mark your ball and fix divots, these aren't too expensive and can help you line up putts or dig into the green if you have a divot to fix. This one is the Callaway Triple Track Ball Marker, but I barely even use it because I'm not hitting greens from that far away. Unlike the like button, which you can hit right now to take two strokes off your handicap. Now we're getting to the baller gear in my bag. And this stuff barely makes a difference, but is fun to use and looks pretty cool. On the more practical side, we have a pair of golf spikes from Nike. These are the Air Zoom cleats, and they keep me from sliding around as I shank balls two fairways over. These two umbrellas are for my clubs and for myself, with the drizzle stick keeping my clubs dry, and the full-sized umbrella for holding over someone as they're hitting. But I'm not a diehard like that, so if there's ever heavy rain, I'm usually not playing. In my bag on my clubs, I have these Ping Core head covers. And while their sole function is to protect my clubs, I really like how they look, even though only my driver is made by Ping. To keep all my extra gear, tees, and shoes that aren't in my bag organized, I have this bag set from TaylorMade. The small pouch holds my iron tees and divot tool, the shoe bag holds my cleats, and the duffel bag holds extra balls, hats, first aid kit, and other random stuff. And last but finally not least, we have the two most expensive items in my bag. And that would be a rangefinder and launch monitor. A rangefinder uses lasers to zap the exact distance to the flag pin. And while most golf apps will give you pretty good measurements to the center of the green, this Callaway 300 Pro gives exact measurements and even accounts for slope. This launch monitor is the Swing Caddy SC200. And I use this every time I'm on the driving range. It tells you how far you're carrying your ball along with ball speed and club speed and comparing it to a $20,000 TrackMan system, the Swing Caddy's distance is almost exactly the same considering it can fit in your pocket. We are done with everything that I'm rocking in my bag for the 2022 season. And as a thank you for watching, I'm giving away two sleeves of golf balls to one lucky subscriber. These could be Pro V1s, TP5s, you name it. All you have to do is drop a like on this video, subscribe to Steven Talks Tech, and let me know down in the comments what my next video should be. A winner will be contacted via Instagram once this video hits 500 views. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you all out on the course. Peace.